you know, I was brand new to the unit. I've only been in the unit almost, I guess, about a year now. And uh, I mean, I had known Danny prior to coming to the bomb squad because uh, I used to work downstairs in the sixth precinct. You know, I've known Danny f for a number of years. But when I got here, he was great. You know, if you had any problem, if you had a question, you know, he, he was the guy to go to. Always willing to help, help you know, like the new guy out. I mean, he was great with me. He was the type of guy that, uh, when tasked to do something, he would do it to its uh, fullest extent. You know, and uh, if he needed help, he would get the help. Uh, if you asked him to do something, if he figured you could do it, he would show you how to do it. Generally, uh, he was Danny was a straight shooter, and uh, he, he just he expected you to do your job. You know, if you were going to take on a responsibility, uh, do it the right way. Don't do it half-ass. Do it the proper way, and uh, there was no room to don't embarrass the office. It certainly fo uh, followed through with uh, his friendships with people. Uh, uh, at, s at sometimes he could be, uh, I, I guess, uh, a little strong. Blunt. Blunt. Yes. <laughs> straight. But to the point. <laughs> but it was. It was. And that was. Straight, yeah. That was yeah. Danny. Yeah. That was Danny. It was, it was. It was. It's a good quality in a person. In the fourteen <coughs> years, uh, things that we did, uh, you know, to each other, never again. Never. Never you know, maliciously, never, mm -hmm. never uh, trying to get a laugh out of him. Danny was in his office and complained he hadn't gotten a birthday cake since he was a little kid, mm -hmm. you know? Hadn't gotten a birthday cake since he was a little kid, and we're not saying nothing. It was his birthday that day. <laughs> and I stopped in a bakery at Ninth Avenue, and I went into the bakery. You got a birthday cake? Oh, yes. This is what I want you to put on there. Happy birthday, Jose. And the lady did happy birthday, Jose, on there. She said, is that right? I said, yes. I said, now draw a line through Jose and put underneath that Danny. And we brought the cake down here, back to the offices, handful of us working. Danny, come out here. And the candle's in there, and he came out, and he sees the birthday cake, and he's looking, and he sees Danny, but Jose above it crossed out. What's this? I said, listen, it's all they had left. It was somebody to pick up their birthday cake left, but the thought is there. And he swears up and down, I bought a day-old cake for his birthday. But... You know, he knew I, I laughed a while. He realized I was just pulling with his leg, but it was a type of, uh, you know, relationship I had with him and friendship. Danny had a little money saved. He had a little money put in the bank. And he could have just about afforded any car that he wanted. But uh, I had a Chevy Blaze in 1989. I like to take care of my vehicles. And uh, he wanted that vehicle. He says, Jimmy, sell me that car. I'm saying, Danny, what do you want that thing for? He says, you can buy any car you want. He says, no, I want that car. I want that car. So I sold him the car. And he had the car for about three years, and it's all... He would talk about is how great that car was and how much he loved that car. And it was just a 1989 Chevrolet Blaze. It was nothing special. He could have bought any car he wanted. But to him, that was, uh, it, didn't, it didn't have to be brand new, but uh, it, the vehicle that he, that's, that's what he wanted and that's what he got. His Blaze is still and, uh, sitting downstairs. The Blaze is still sitting downstairs. I spent a week with Danny down in uh, Huntsville, Alabama for training. And of course, the training lasts for so many hours and then you have your downtime at the hotel and in the bar and having some drinks and, uh, and leaning against the bar and a lady came up to him and asked him to dance. You know, and uh, I recall him looking at me and, 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 you know, she says with the southern drawl, don't look at him, I asked you to dance. And <laughs> I said to him, Danny, go dance with the lady. And he did, he went out and danced with her, you know, and like, wow, what was that all about? <laughs> hey, he looked, looked at me for permission, I guess, can I go dance? Hey, <laughs> she asked you, not me. Dan, Danny's passion was living in Manhattan. Though. He loved it. Because like, like Jimmy said before, Danny had the money to, to buy places, yeah. you know, and I said, well, why don't you put a, put a place in the country or out and out on the beach? And Danny, Danny liked Manhattan. He just really liked it. It was convenient liked the, for him. He loved it. You know, yeah, liked, it, liked living in Manhattan, you know. The, just, he went out. He went to different bars, he, different shows. Restaurants. Uh, restaurants. He was, oh, he was never one uh, uh, to sit around and uh, be a couch potato and watch TV. It was, uh, there, there was things to do and people to see out there, and he wanted to do it. When he left, you felt it right away. Yes. But you always, I, 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 I recall, I mean, even if, after we went down there, uh, day after day, it was, uh, you know, you, going down there, looking where he went in. Even the guys that, that weren't there when the buildings fell later on, some of the guys in the office took, these, took the guys back, like myself and a couple other guys, we went back down there to look and, and to look in the hole because you really can't understand it unless you see it. You know, well, what do you mean you can't find them? You know, and you go and you look and you say, now you know why you can't find them. I don't know how they could find anybody in that mess. Danny, uh, it's not a day goes by that I don't think about him. You know, it's going to be a long time. Uh, 
I, I don't think I'll ever stop uh, thinking about uh, Danny because of the time we spent together and uh, a lot of personal moments. Uh, you know, Danny uh, told some guys certain things that he didn't tell others because uh, he know he could trust, uh, you know, uh, be confident in telling somebody something. Uh, it's like a lot of people. I mean, you know, he can confide in more than others. Uh, Danny, you know, and, and I got along quite well, you know, in that aspect. If you needed something from Danny, he, he, he would never turn the other cheek. He was always there for you. Even if he knew that you were taking advantage of him or somebody was taking advantage of him, it didn't make a difference. He knew. He was that smart. He knew you were taking it, but he'd, he'd still give it to you. You know, that's just the type of man he was. If he was looking down right now, I know Danny would say, hey, listen, listen, you know, quit talking about me so much and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. start pr praise somebody else. Give the, uh, I, I, know, I know Danny would, He'd be the first to say, you know, give give credit to all the rescue workers. Give credit to, to all the all the families uh, who, who lost loved ones in the World Trade Center. Uh, he, he would put everybody else before himself. And I know if he's looking down right now, he's probably saying, "You're right, Jimbo. Tell him, you know." But yeah, uh, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what he's saying. He's saying, "Listen, you said enough yeah. about me. Uh, you know, so, let's go ahead and uh, you yeah. know, what about all the rest of the people?" He was he was, uh, he was a, he was modest. He, he was a humanitarian, is what he was, and that, that's a, I can wrap that up and say he definitely was a humanitarian, and he'll be missed.